Welcome back everyone to the Bullish Money YouTube channel. We got special guest again, Cameron. What's going on, my brother? Not much, not much. Same, same, different day. You know how it is, man. Yeah, I know exactly how it is. So we, the last time we spoke, and I'm still uh, putting out the, you know, the final edits for, uh, for the topics that we discussed, but uh, I, I would guess like uh, early um, commentary sounds like uh, we may have gotten a little bit too controversial. You know, people, uh, it's, it's kind of weird because uh, I, I get this comment a lot from, oh. especially from uh, conservative trolls, or I don't know if they're trolls, Fair. but just, okay. just from conservatives in general that they don't. You know, they don't want things to get racial, you know, like, don't be racial. It's like, but, you know, I don't really understand that whole uh, point because uh, when you go to, um, you know, really Hicksville type of places, right, Alabama, Mississippi, you know, Georgia, Kentucky, whatever, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a pockets of, I'm not saying everybody's like this, but there's definitely pockets of uh, people who are very uh, racially aware, right? And so why, why can't we talk, oh, yeah. you know, why can't we talk about that, right? I mean, it's, it's like a, it's a reality. <laughs> yeah, hey, because, you know, reality and facts checks makes people uncomfortable, you know? Yeah, and, and, and you know, all I'm saying with the whole racial component, because you know what, I want to talk about race, right? Race is a great topic to talk about because it's so... Yeah, it's so prevalent, and yet it's like one of those taboo topics that nobody wants to address simply because I don't know. It's like I guess in America now you can't talk about race, and you, both the liberals and the conservatives nah. don't want to talk about race. It's kind of weird to me, yeah. uh, because it's like race is such a big uh, reality everywhere else in the mm -hmm. world, except here we try to make it not a reality, and then you get these yeah. su suppressed feelings that start you know popping out. But uh, I don't really, I don't really see the big deal either way. I, I talking about race. I don't, I don't know why is that. Nah. Why is that such a nah. uh, such a big issue? Here's here. Uh, um, we're gonna get to the uh, we're gonna get to a, the, the topic at hand. But I just want to say, all I'm saying about race is that certain people have more social currency than other people. I mean, as in. If you're a certain color, there are certain places that are no-go zones for you. That, that's just reality. Even yeah. and it works the other way too. If you're white, there's probably areas, you know, where um, all the areas you can go. <laughs> right. I mean, you can go everywhere. Right. Yeah. You know, but you may want to avoid places like you know Compton or or uh, South Philly. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, the complexion there is a little bit. Uh, uh, there's a there's a there's a high contrast there, high contrast neighborhoods. So, you know, it works both ways, and that's just these di this dynamic is just you know what I wanted to talk about. But anyways, yep. the topic at hand. I want to lighten up the mood because you know when you get racial, people get a little crazy. So <laughs> we're gonna we're, we're, yeah we're gonna we're gonna lower it down. We're not gonna be we're not gonna yeah. be racial today. No race. Nah, nah. <laughs> this is a, a except for <laughs> Josh and Nice Shyamalan. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> is it because he's uh, a little bit uh, on the darker end of the spectrum? <laughs> it doesn't help his case. Yeah. Ooh. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say because uh, you know we okay we're gonna try to not make it uh, that was just that was just a little uh, no. uh, uh, it, it was, was a that was joke, a freebie guys it was a skit don't worry about it yeah we're not gonna be racial okay starting from now we're not gonna be racial but I do want to lighten the mood and yes I want to talk about pop culture specifically movies specifically specifically M Night Shyamalan I did see a couple of his uh well not a couple of his video uh, of his movies but i did uh, come across uh his name uh through i think it was like a rerun or something i saw on tv anyways and so oh that name popped up again um as you know cameron he was very big uh starting in the late 90s onwards his big uh, breakout film and you're the expert on this i'm not really an expert but uh his big breakout film was um, The Sixth Sense, right? And uh, he started this whole, I guess, 
sub-genre of creating twists and turns in the in the plot line. And I think when we when at least for me, when I first saw Six Sense, I thought, ooh, that's really smart. You know, you you got me there. That was a, that was really smart. But then, you know, the guy just kept doing it and doing it and doing it where it really didn't make sense. And, and it seems to like progressively get worse. With the except there are certain exceptions you may want to mention, but it just seemed to progressively get worse, right? Where it's like you're just you're just plot twisting just for the sake of plot twisting. Am I am Absolutely. I incorrect here? No, absolutely. And actually, uh, I think one of his greatest plot twists was from uh, the plant movie, uh, The Happening, oh, yeah. uh, oh. in which there was no plot twist. Yeah. He got me. He got he Shyamalan'd me. That was his greatest. That was his greatest twist. Yeah. I DVR'd that uh, that movie. And yes, I am very, very old school. Um, but I have not yet uh, cut the cord and gone streaming. But um, yeah, so I, I DV, DVR'd that, that film because I've never seen it before. And I was really looking forward to seeing it. But, you know, life happens. You get busy, you start making some money, you know, <laughs> this kind of stuff, right? And so I just didn't have time to uh, do, you know, the happening. And... Um, and and one you know you know that um, that very popular very funny YouTube channel called uh, Cinema Sins, and you know they make fun of all the you know the great movies and, and they kind of make you think oh wow I didn't you know I didn't really think this film was so stupid until I watched Cinema Sins. Yeah. Well, I noticed that Cinema Sins had a um, a whole episode on uh, the happening, and I and I resisted it before, but I was like you know what screw it I'm not gonna watch this film. Let's just watch the Cinema Sins version of it, which is sort of there like you, the there you go, you know, the sarcastic Cliff Notes version of the movie. And even yeah. even not seeing this movie, I just can't help but think, man, this must. I mean, the people who actually spent watching this bullshit, they must have been so furious. I would have asked for my money twice, you know, just like. I, mean, what's, what? I actually have a story about that. Okay, go ahead. So. When I was underage, the movie came out, and I was like, hey, why not sneak into it? So, did I support M. Night Shyamalan? No. Did I sit through that garbage? Yeah. So, lose-lose at the end of the day, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I... I, I uh, uh, um... Even watching the Cinema Sins version, this is how bad it is. Even watching the Cinema Sins version, which is like sort of like the, the Mystery Science Theater three thousand or whatever. Um, God, it's so it, it's irritating to watch the parody of it. You know, it's just it's so. This must this must be one of the worst films ever made. At least with uh, in terms of not not I mean, it's certainly not the absolute worst but here here's here, let me let me let me uh put it in context i think stipulations i think it's one of the worst films where the producers and the people involved in the film made a legitimate serious effort into producing a blockbuster and it just came out such utter crap i think in terms of that because there's there's obviously you know terrible movies like what is it that the room right it's probably it's so bad it's good this is not one of those it's so bad it's good this is just plain bullshit you know it's like it's no, so fair fair <laughs> no see okay the room at least is uh tommy's heart was there he just had no talent yeah and it's you kind of feel for the guy. It's like, okay, this was your pet project. You wanted to do something. You put all your time and effort and money into this. Where he got his money, nobody knows. But don't ask that question. But it's, yeah, it's so bad that it caves in on itself and just becomes, like, somewhat charming to an extent. This yeah. is just un pleasantness <laughs> for two hours. It is. It is unpleasant. And, and then... And hey, it turns out the plants were killing people because the environment. Yeah, I, I, okay. I, you, you can. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. There was like 
plants and wind and I don't know. There is like, okay. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know what was. Exactly. I don't know what was going on, but here's a question that just kind of popped up into my head. So the, the actor slash producer slash director, whatever of, of the room, um, you think he's a better actor than M. Night Shyamalan and his dumb cameos that always ruins his films? If that's even possible? Without, without, a, without a doubt, adding Tommy Wiseau to any sort of movie, anything, will make it infinitely better. <laughs> that's, There's something about that vacant thousand-yard stare, that broken half-English, yeah. mm, just charming. He's uh he's from Poland, right? Or did I get that wrong? I don't know. Nobody really knows okay. where it's... Tommy Wiseau's. Really? Okay. But he says he's from New Orleans. All right, all right. He, for some reason, I get Poland in my head, but uh, well, either yeah. okay, that that's uh, neither here nor there. Um, what? Um, what I feel, that's, this is the other thing that really bugs me about uh, M. Night Shyamalan is his freaking cameos. One of the reasons why he, uh, Shyamalan has become, uh, I guess, reemerged is because of that film, um, was it called Glass? Which is, um, you know, the sequel uh, to... Um, that other, I, I don't know, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? That that movie that came out yeah, last no. year, right? And so, yeah, so, he, so he came out, yeah. he, is that, is that, am I correct? It's called Glass, right? That is, is sort of like this yeah. weird yeah, sequel. Yeah, so okay. it, it, it's, it started with Unbreakable, moved on to Split, and finally culminated with Glass. Okay, yeah. okay, so, so in Glass, I watched that film, um, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, because I like to watch films for free, and it was free, so I watched it. There you go. Save, save me, save me the time and effort. Let me know how it was. Break it down. <laughs> well, oh, so you didn't watch it? No. Oh, okay. I, I didn't oh, see Split okay. either. That, that, yeah. that, that's wow. a surprise to me. I thought you had watched it. Um, yeah, this was. I don't know. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's a, it's uh, it, 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 it was. Uh, a, a, a it was sort of like the happening in the sense that it's trying too hard, a, a, in my opinion. Uh, it's not as bad as the happening, but you know, I mean, I I guess I sort of found moments of enjoyment. But uh, um, where the movie just really lost it for me was again the cameos i mean this this guy does not learn a fucking lesson does he He's, uh, he just puts nah. him he puts himself in this weird cameo again and the whole narrative the whole tone atmosphere just changes because his acting is so poor it, again it's it, his acting is like the is the embodiment of the happening as as it you know comes out from a person right it's yeah. just Okay. He tries so hard to be natural that it becomes so unnatural. It's sad. It's like it's like, dude, you're good behind the camera. Tell the fucking story and get the fuck out of the way. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? That's why you hire professionals, you know? Yeah. I mean, good lord. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, when, when you have such great strengths in, in a particular area, you go with that strength. You know, start you know i mean if you're if you're yeah if you're on a race car team and you're in your you uh want, you know the guy that changes a tire and you're like the best tire changing person right you don't go and say i'm gonna i'm gonna do a few laps <laughs> right no you're, you're trained to do to change that tire you're the best at it you're paid that's what you're do paid to do so do that yeah. And everything is fine. Why are you jumping into the cockpit and then just screwing everything up? It's it's uh, exactly. it, it, it breaks the uh, the fourth wall. It's same. It's the same thing. Like um, I don't mean to uh, uh, do a hard segue, but it, it's sort of like the uh, the 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 original uh, left left behind series, where Kirk Cameron, and I know it's like oh god, I don't want to hear that name, but. Uh, wow. Kirk, you know, Kirk Cameron, you know, he plays this character, 
and, and you know it's fine. You know it's a Christian movie. You, you 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 give you give leeway to Christian movies like you would give leeway to uh, a retard that you're playing basketball. A Tommy Wiseau movie, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what I mean. Like, you know, if you're doing charities, yeah, Tommy, for... Tommy, Tommy did it. Right, right. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be bad, but yeah, it's like you know, when you're doing uh, charity work for mentally handicapped children. You're not gonna go dunking on some poor kid, right? It just you don't do these things, right? You don't yeah. do, you know. So, so, so you give you give the kids leeway, and, and Christian movies, I think you have to give them the leeway that hey, they're Christian, so you know, don't be too harsh on Christian movies. But even when you give them great margin, right? There are certain rules, fundamental rules of movie making and producing that you must obey you must abide by these things you there's certain things that there's a there's certain boxes that you don't go out of that box there's just it is fundamental right and and kirk cameron he breaks all of those rules by going off script on a scripted movie and starts saying hey you know um uh if there's a building there must be a builder if there's a painting there must be a painter in the same way we have creation we have a creator and let me tell you about jesus christ and i was like wait, wait a way where why is this coming up why are you preaching to me breaking the fourth wall to me that was part of his contract he actually has to uh, have a full-on um you know speech at least every uh 25 minutes in that movie oh my god it's the only way he would do it uh, yeah I, I actually never got through uh the whole uh left behind series because it's so maddening um the uh, to to watch it that 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 probably is a candidate for just worst movie ever made with no qualifications whatsoever but um that's how i feel about m night Shyamalan. he's the kirk cameron sure. of destroying your own movies basically well, Josh, I think there is uh, one very important thing that you uh, failed to really see in this whole process. Oh, uh, yeah, what's that? The ultimate twist. He's already pulled on us. Every single one of these cameos in his movies is a setup for M. Night Shyamalan, the movie. It'll all be explained. It'll all be revealed. All the mysteries. It's coming summer 2022. Thank you. Is it like uh, that movie, the uh, the village, where it was like, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, it, it, it's so frustrating. This guy, um, he, uh, he's, he, I guess he's also sort of like the Mariah Carey of, uh, of, uh, or the Christina Aguilera of, of movie making. And, and what I mean by that is that you know these, these. Uh, uh, girls with, uh, you know, female singers with, with, you know, high or wide, uh, uh, vocal range. They'll keep going up the register and going in a, keep going up and up those octaves. Right. And it's like, you know, at a certain point, I mean, does, does a song really call for you to go, you know, three octaves above high C? I don't think so. You know, I'm not, I'm not a dog or anything. So I don't need, you don't need to go up that high of a register. Right. And it's like, yes, you can do it. You have, you're, you're blessed yeah. with the, you know, the physical, you know, capacity to do it, but should you do it? You know, I think that's, that's where the real artist mentality comes in. Should you do it? That's the thing with uh, M. Night Shyamalan. It's like, he doesn't understand restraint. Um, I would forgive one stupid cameo, but every single movie he's somewhere, and it's like a it's like a Where's Waldo, right? <laughs> like yeah, it's like uh, the the Starbucks cup uh, challenge in Fight Club. There's a Starbucks cup in every single scene of that movie. Challenge. There you go. Yeah. Um, he's he's in there somewhere. He's in there somewhere, and you know what? It's unlike. And I, I, I think uh, it's fair to say that you're you're a big uh, comic book fan, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm not a big comic book fan, but I, mm -hmm. I there's a lot of those Marvel Mar Marvel films that uh, that I enjoy. I think I think there's a certain yeah. uh, a levity to it, and uh, there's a certain 
you know, there, there's a certain enjoyment factor. They really understand the art of entertaining mm -hmm. people. I'll give them that for sure. And the, mm -hmm. the cameos that um, Stan Lee makes, uh, you know, oh, yeah. and, and uh, you know, rest his soul. You know, I, uh, that guy was a, every cameo <laughs> he has made is I thought it was very charming, well done. You know, it's it's uh, th there is that there is that again that charm appeal to it that universally mm -hmm. people the audience can appreciate. It's not you don't have to be a comic book fan to to uh, appreciate uh, you know those few seconds that he appears on on camera. And he mm -hmm. seems like a real natural for the camera too, even though he's the yeah. you know he's the architect behind these great stories and that's his strength. But he seems very natural. Mm -hmm. In front of the camera, M Night Shyamalan, <laughs> dude. I don't know, man. That guy. I mean, just seeing his face, you don't even have to say anything. You know, yeah. there's just certain people that just don't belong in front of the camera. I don't know what it is, but nah. they just sort of suck the life out of the scene. <laughs> yeah. Know? No, absolutely. No, and at least in universe, uh, the Stanley cameos were kind of explained. I think it was one of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Okay. Uh, there's what are called Watchers, I believe. Don't quote me on this if I'm wrong. Or, or kill me, please. But yeah, they're basically these um, giant uh, kind of cosmic entities that watch out on, you know, the galaxy and can kind of, you know, I guess go in different places. So it was revealed that he was technically one of those people. Mm. So then he's, all those cameos are at least somewhat explained. M. Night's... Nah. No, no, no. He, uh... He just appears in the dumbest places, and he, he you know, you know, yeah. um, what? Gosh, it was I don't know if it was in the happening or if it was signs. You know, these movies start; they just sort of like interchangeable to me at this point. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, he had one cameo. I think I think it may have been the. Uh, oh God, I don't know. Maybe it, it's either signs or the happening. One, one or the other. He's in a he's in a beat up old truck and they're in like somewhere in Iowa or Nebraska or something and he's giving advice. Yeah, that's signs. Signs, okay. And he's giving advice yeah. to, uh, to uh, is it the Mel Gibson was in that film? Mel Gibson, yeah. yeah. I, think I, was, I, I think it was the drunk that ended up, the the preacher, or no, Mel Gibson was the preacher. Anyway, he was the yeah. drunk yeah. that uh, plowed into Mel Gibson's wife. Oh. I believe. Okay. Um, anyways, it's like, he he films a lot of the the, the the films are set in places that are uh, oh okay now I have to now I do have to go racial I uh, sorry I, I I need one exemption here I need one exemption need we to got go twenty minutes without it it's all good <laughs> I need to go hey, racial for this for, one let's let's yeah, go right. racial you gotta okay? witness. You gotta yeah, witness yeah. Now. I got diplomatic immunity for this one case uh, for this one argument so. Um, Shyamalan sets a lot of his scenes or his movies in uh, regions that are more or less um, racially or ethnically homogenous. Certainly, mm -hmm. I think all of his movies are in regions where there are no Indian people, period, okay? It, 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 because even, even in The Sixth Sense, I think it was in a mm -hmm. Philadelphia, right? The, I mean, how many Indian sure. people, how many Indian people are in, you know, Philadelphia? It's it, it's, you know, it, oh, it, only M Night Shyamalan, <laughs> right? right? And like in 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 the signs, I don't know where that was, but it looks like you know, again, Iowa or Nebraska or insert yeah. insert name here. Um, there are no Indian people there. You know, especially it, it's not just the me metropolitan areas of those uh, states. It's like way out into the rural areas in the boonies where there's like KKK rallies and stuff. Right. There are no yeah. Indian people. Certainly in, there were there are no Indian people that are just accepted as, hey, he's just, you know, <laughs> Uncle Bob. Or, no, there's just it's just yeah. not that way. So it, it, so his. his Introducing himself into the narrative, I think it's it's very jarring too because of, I'm sorry, his race, you know, or, or his his uh, ethnic uh, background because it doesn't fit in to, uh, you know, it doesn't fit into the narrative, 
right? By the way, did he make a cameo in uh, in the village? I think so. I, I thought he was uh, like the the park ranger at the end or something like that, oh, oh, where it's okay. revealed. Oh, it's modern day yeah. actually. <laughs> so, I don't know, something like that. Who I don't know. All his cameos blend together, just like. <laughs> But Shit, even, even then, that's like a rural place in Pennsylvania, right? I mean, how many Indian people are in? Look, because I say this because uh, I'm sorry, we're going we're going a little bit over time, but let me just get this point out because my one of my good friends, he is from Pennsylvania, okay, in rural Pennsylvania, and uh, he's white, and he told me, okay, this is these are his words, not my words. But he told me, um, you know, I'm Appalachian trash. It's like there's there's white trash and then what he called Appalachian trash. He's like, he's just like a mutt of all the white trash peoples put together, and he called it Appalachian trash. And that's what he and he and he said, hey, you know, that's just I don't know what I am. I'm just Appalachian trash. I'm like, okay, but I'm guaranteeing you that's the majority populace there in those types of areas where the village was you know filmed okay there's no indian dudes right just just you know strolling uh strolling around or god forbid being a, a sheriff of the place i mean it doesn't make any sense you know that you have to suspend disbelief when when he appears you know even more so than a child that talks to ghosts <laughs> Yeah, there I you guess. go. That suspension of disbelief. I think that's the the bigger plot twist. <laughs> yeah. That, By the way, hey, let's let's get that going. Let's get a hashtag rolling. Appalachian trash. Yeah. Oh. Uh, every, everyone, everyone watching this, uh, please uh, hashtag Appalachian trash. What, yeah. Get that. Get that in the comments right now. Uh, yeah. And and uh, you're gonna you're gonna get uh, tomorrow. I'm not going to give the last name, but you're going to give credit to uh, Stephen. He actually has a very, um, very uh, safe last name because it's very uh, common. But we'll just call him Stephen. So if you do give credit, uh, give credit to Stephen who coined the term Appalachian Trash. I think I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I think it's hashtag Stephen, hashtag Appalachian Trash. Let's get it going. <laughs> hashtag... Number one tomorrow on Twitter. Calling it. <laughs> Hashtag deliverance. <laughs> Hashtag banjo solo. Oh boy, yeah. Oh, and and, and he cites that movie uh, when, when I ask him about you know his background and uh, um, how he grew up. So uh, yeah, Appalachian trash. You know what? I think we'll just uh, we'll just end it there then. <laughs> I I promised, we promised not to get racial, and we ended on a racial note. That's just how it works. You know, we're a very racial, we're very racial here. You know, I just can't help it. So, yeah, well, we'll see you guys again. Cameron, take care of yourself. Don't get in too much trouble. No, no promises. All right, see you all next time.